Hi, this is Liana, Holistic Intimacy Coach, and today I'm doing a video to answer a request that Hannah Spana, she's a very good and nice and great supporter in our community, and she asked for a video around the womb. So because I have still more men in this community than women, guys, I need to tell you exactly what you're going to listen to in this video. First of all, it's not your scientific or your academic perspective. Um, I don't want to do that. Uh, if you're looking for something like that, then refer to other videos out there, though they won't be called womb. What you're going to see here is, first of all, a um, free style and spirit discussion around a feminine understanding of what the womb is. No, there are no practices, no meditations, no nothing like that, but it is a discussion and um, a little bit of sharing from my womanly experience. Um, not too extreme, so don't worry about that. After this video is done, because I'm freestyling it, I'll try to come up with a structure and put it under the video. So we scroll down and click the button uh, on the, under the video and see what I approached, you know, just get an idea in advance. So that being said, um, Join this channel if you're not subscribed. Check out the other videos. Some of them are more structured. This one is freestyle. So we're gonna dive into it. The womb. From a medical and anatomical perspective, it is the uterus. And this is the organ that does not have a correspondent in a man's body. This is the organ where we bear children. So the cradle of life, let's say the portal <laughs> between uh, not embodied and embodied and walking into this world. It's a metaphor, but it's a powerful one to explain exactly how big and important this organ is in a woman's body. From a medical perspective, women have, you know, they can have a very elastic, it's, it's still a muscle. So it, it will expand, it will contract, it's still a muscle, though you can't tense it like you would tense um, other muscles in your body. It is an empty organ. I forgot the scientific name of that. Some organs are filled, this one is empty. Uh, and what you encounter in terms of problems, um, some women can have it upside down, retroverse uterus, and sometimes that can cause painful sexual encounters. Um, penetration basically can have pain. So in those cases, women might need, you know, partners who are smaller, uh, thinner. Yes, I'm talking about the penis because probably a partner that is too endowed compared to them can basically produce discomfort because the vagina, as everybody knows, has an end to it. It's called the cervix. And that is the canal through small canal that connects to the uterus. And when the penis comes up against that and it's too painful, then that's one of the explanations. The uterus is retroverse and it's extremely um, sensitive. A possible solution for that, but take it you know, lightly, don't necessarily try it just because I've said it here and you're still gonna need a lot of practice to go about that especially if you're a woman going through this, is actually anal sex. Um, and this is something that I've worked with um, a client, a woman client in coaching sessions. She did notice this benefit. There's no end to the colon, basically, because when you have anal sex, there's no stopping point. So any discomfort that comes from vaginal penetration doesn't come from anal penetration. However, it's not so easy to, you know, just get into it like that. Just with, as with this woman, there's a lot of practices that help you relax, help you get accustomed to the idea. And if this doesn't resonate with you at all, you know, by all means, don't do it. However, this is one problem that many women have and that can affect them sexually speaking. And this is a potential solution there are obviously others, sex isn't just about penetration. So again, those are different discussions for a different video. Other problems that women encounter 
when it comes to their womb, still medical, are when they have endometriosis, and that's a condition that actually had your um, one of the uterine walls, the back wall is thin, and the menstruation is extremely, extremely painful. And um, yeah, those are not pretty experiences. I don't have that experience myself. I do have a woman that I know, and menstruation days are extremely, extremely challenging. Uh, another medical problem that can affect women are uh, uterine fibroids. Those are, um, how do I say this? Stuff that can grow in a woman's uterus. They can be cured, but before they are cured, they can sometimes cause, um, again, pain during menstruation. Or in the case of some women, they cannot get pregnant because of those. I did have women around me who went through that experience. They can be cured though. Some can be cured, especially when they're detected early and problem solved. You just have to know what you're facing with. Men, just because this sounds a little bit out there, doesn't mean that your partner might not, you know, actually face those problems. So it does make sense that you get accustomed to them. That would be all that I can say right now when it comes to um, uterus, womb, in terms of medical anatomical. The rest of the stuff, I'm going to talk about them from a purely feminine perspective, uh, metaphorical, all sorts of associations, nothing again academic, nothing scientifically proven and so on. So bear with me if you want to hear a little bit about the, you know, some of the women's universe and feminine mysteries and so on. Um, first of all, the womb, and I'm gonna go extremely wild with you here, energetically speaking, it is the first polarity, positive polarity in a woman's body. If you don't know what this is, then check out my channel. I have a video on energy exchange in relationships. And uh, the thumbnail says, consider this before you invest. There's a yellow graph as you're looking at the screen on this side. And uh, in that video, I explain a bit about each of the energy centers based on the Hindu tradition. Even if you don't believe in this stuff, maybe it's a good thing to just hear it out. And you know, for your general culture, when you go out and meet people, you might have this discussion at a certain point. Um, so the womb uh, is the sacral chakra. That's the name of that energy center. It is situated in the middle of that of the womb. And it's the first positive polarity center for women. It is a powerhouse of femininity, creativity, sensuality, sexuality, energy, especially for women. And what I mean by this is that that's where energetically, metaphorically, woo-woo speaking, women get their energy and their inspiration and their drive for their lives. So um, when you hear women about connecting to the womb and doing meditations for the womb and just um, withdrawing within some even, even refer this uh, refer to this as a woman cave. Um, it's not very frequent, but I did hear it. That's what they're talking about. They're very feminine, the, the epicenter of femininity, fertility, maternity, sensuality again, all the beautiful, juicy stuff. And why do I say, like, why do I mention all of these things, aside from the fact that I know about them, because I'm also a woman, and believe it or not, I also connect to my womb. I take time to just, I usually, you can't see it here. I need to stand up a bit. So I usually hold my hands like this on the womb. Um, and I, just to connect, especially when I'm not feeling so well, I intuitively, instinctively hold my hand on my womb. Usually women who are pregnant have this, but, um, um, I never was pregnant. However, I don't need to be to become protective and connect to this part of my body. Also, the meditations, they were the 
guided focusing practices, all that, you know, funny stuff that women do, uh, they get you into this juicy, juicy mood. You're going to see a woman, even if she's not, you know, extremely made up with a perfect hairdo, impeccable nails and perfect clothing and high heels and all of that. You can still feel if she has her juice in flow and connected to that. Just, you know, just from her vibe, from her attitude, from her way of being, how she speaks, how she, even when she doesn't speak, you can just, you can sense it on a woman. It doesn't come through the screen, maybe, but if you're in a physical presence with a woman, you're going to feel it. You're definitely going to feel it. Guys, if you have a juicy woman at home, uh, then you know what I'm talking about. And you know that sometimes when she's disconnected from that, she's freaking out, she's worried, she's stressed. Those are the times when she is draining or she has her this part of her body, energetically speaking, drained. She was too worried, too stressed out, too many responsibilities, too tired. So basically she can't connect to the juicy part of it because she's much, very much in her survival mode. That's a different part in the body that is associated symbolically speaking with this. By the way, just because I say that the womb is energetically and metaphorically associated with sensuality, creativity, femininity, fertility, it doesn't mean that it resides there. It means that from a symbolic perspective, when we as women try to connect with those, we focus on our womb. That's the seat of femininity, basically, in our power, our feminine powerhouse. Um, and the beauty of this is that when a woman is connected to the womb, she's going to be more flexible and more in flow, even in movements. Um, you're going to see many women who do this. They are belly dancers or they simply sway their hips. Uh, when they are engaging in intimacy, they make a lot of movements. And I'm not talking about fast movements, you know, the, what is it, the belly shake super fast with all the crinkly, soundy, noisy, jiggly things around, you know, the bells that they have or the uterus. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking simply about swaying and moving her hips and her obviously her belly. And um, yeah, you probably felt that. <laughs> if you've had sex with a woman, you felt that movement you know, at a certain point. And um, that's a beautiful way, you know, in which they women connect to this part of their body. And you um, you also feel it. <laughs> Hopefully you also enjoy it. Now, why does all of this need, I mean, what's the point of all of this? You might be asking yourself if you're not a woman or if you're a woman that doesn't connect to this part of her. For polarity, most men prefer a woman who is juicy, succulent, yummy, figuratively speaking, okay? They enjoy that. Heck, even other women enjoy that. Yeah, this kind of person, you, you cannot not like a person like this, a woman like this. Um, it relaxes the atmosphere, it detenses, it just brings a light atmosphere, a beautiful, pleasurable atmosphere, and we need that in our lives. And Again, I'm going to stress this one. You don't have to be a supermodel. You don't have to be a porn star, whatever. You don't have to be a fitness model. Any woman can connect to her womb and learn to flow with it and learn to bring that juicy, succulent, yummy energy into her life as well. And I said that I had a story to share from my experience. Um, this is also about maternity, this place. And my relationship to my mother, bum bum, here I am bringing this stuff up. I never spoke about this. I rarely speak about this with my friends also, but it actually, this is it. You know, your relationship to your mother as a woman is also, it shows in how you connect to your womb. My relationship to my mom was not great. 
My mom's not the most feminine woman out there. She had to raise two daughters on her own. My dad wasn't around much. Um, I'm not going to get into that. No daddy issues, so relax around that. More mommy issues. <laughs> but uh, she had to be, like she said it many times, she had to be both a man and a woman. You know, single parent raising two daughters that were a handful, especially me. I'm the oldest and I was the, well, I, I was a handful, basically. <laughs> but that's a different discussion. So she had to, and she was the pillar of the family. She was the pillar for um, her parents and for my dad also, though they divorced pretty when I was a kid and sometimes even for my dad's parents. So she was definitely like, she was your rock solid woman there, grounded material, um, you know, with logistics covering all of that. So she had to do that. Somebody had to be the pillar. She stepped into that role. So she wasn't exactly easy to be around, especially me as a young girl. Maybe some of you have picked this up about me. I'm also highly sensitive, though I didn't show this much, but yeah, highly sensitive and I can pick up stuff. And when I was a kid, I didn't even know what was going on with me. I didn't know why, why, why I was freaking out. I didn't know why I was rejecting my mom many times. The more I got older, the more I understood the hypersensitive part of me that picked that up and boy, so handful there. So a few years back, I found out about this woman who did um, Tok Sen, I think that's the name of it, um, belly massage and belly or womb healing, basically, from a Taoist perspective. I have a thing for Taoism. So I went to her and I went for a session. I didn't do that much crying. I mean, I wasn't all tears and all melting and all, all of that, but I enjoyed it. I actually, you know, I dove into the juicy part of it. And um, I got out of that entire session. It was about three hours long, talking before, doing the movements, all of those movements, uh, staying with some, you know, a bit of discomfort. I had never done that. So my muscles were also a bit stiff. And uh, then doing the, you know, debriefing afterwards and so on. And I got out of that session like, like a baby, <laughs> like a little baby. And um, a few days later, I went home and I, um, I was speaking to my mother. And those are one of the few times when I actually could open up and tell her thank you for the, you know, all the stuff that she had to do because i can imagine it wasn't easy for her to be the pillar you know the man and the woman mother and father in our family and i told her that some of the most beautiful things that i did including with this line of work but also the previous line of work environmental protection i could never have done it without her support um, so not too many people would have paid me to be in a job that did all the stuff that I did. And I created a lot of things. Like uh, I, I inherited some things from her and the super builder energy that comes from her also. So yeah, I got to open up and say, thank you. Obviously, you know, like any parent though, I'm not a parent. I mean, I have a wolf, but I guess it doesn't compare to actually birthing your own kid and raising them and hearing them say thank you and all of that. But she definitely melted. <laughs> you know, my super, super strong mom, she melted. And I also shared that with, um, I'm a volunteer in an environmental NGO, not the one that I funded. I no longer connected to that one. Other mother issues there figuratively speaking, but those will be addressed in their own time. But I also shared with the women in the NGO that I'm volunteering with some of them. And yeah, beautiful discussions around, you know, the power of connecting to your womb and having another woman help you heal stuff and then how it shows up in your life. And those are beautiful discussions. So yeah, and they inspire, obviously. I mean, the womb connection, they'll also inspire other women. 
it's not just you know juicy for men it's juicy for anybody it's fertile figuratively speaking for anybody so man woman whoever is sensitive enough to connect with a woman and, and, and you know meet her in that beautiful energy then that's what it really makes sense to do any kind of practices maybe you do youtube guided meditations around the womb because there are a few maybe you go like me to a woman who actually does belly transformation <laughs> healing and transformation from that perspective whatever your path is womb work and womb connection as a woman is a thing of beauty if you ask me that's our feminine powerhouse and um i encourage any man out there because i know that you guys are more here in this channel still um i encourage you to support your woman to do that you know have her own time when she connects or have somebody and she can work with somebody another woman on her womb feminine fertility femininity sensuality sexuality creativity issues because you're also going to benefit from that men also feed from a woman that is in that juicy um, energy of herself so it does make sense even though it sounds you know a bit wacky woo out there um, it's womanly work womanhood work and that stuff needs to happen and you just need to be aware of it and, and support your woman to do her womanhood stuff okay so Hannah, because you inspired this video, I'll be super curious to hear what you think of it. And if there's anything that I missed, I'm going to do a womb discussion number two. So no worries about that. And otherwise, um, ladies, check out the Sex Dojo for Women. We got a lot of beautiful practices there. Um, also check out the coaching possibilities that I have, either one hour session or the entire full coaching material package. Guys, I also do coaching sessions with you. So in the one hour strategic session, we're going to look at a very structured, pragmatic, you know, in a masculine way, or the actual coaching package that can also be for you. No practices for guys. Um, not that I don't know about them, but since I live in a woman's body, not in a man's body, I would rather encourage you to seek out men who do these practices and you work with them. It makes sense that way. Otherwise, subscribe to the channel, support it. You can also support this channel. If you find inspiration, information, growth in the videos that I have here, and I have a lot of them, then you can also support my channel. There's a PayPal button somewhere around here where you can support with any sum that you consider. And otherwise, I'll see you with other videos and other requests. I am here anytime I can to respond with a video. Ciao.